I'm Elizabeth with Hamilton Native Outpost, and when I'm not working at the seed company, I like to be in my garden. It's one of my favorite places to be. And you'll have to excuse the weeds. I've been a little busy and not on top of the weeds. But what's on my mind today is how mulch works in a garden, and how does that apply to a diverse native grassland? So we're going to explore that a little bit. We're going to start here, and then we will actually go to a diverse native grassland and see how it works out there. So when we have mulch in a garden, and you can see over here I've got wood chips uh, that I've used as mulch, and over here where I'm standing, there is no mulch. I have not got it mulched yet. The mulch in my garden has a couple reasons I do it. One, it keeps down weeds, but that's really not the primary purpose that we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about the impact that it has on the soil. So as far as the soil is concerned, this mulch is a great tool to keep water in the soil. Over here, this part of it is going to get much drier sooner. Um, I just watered here the other day, but the watering will last longer over here. In fact, on the surface here, it is already dry looking, kind of brown, dusty a little bit. Um, not super dusty, but just a little bit. Whereas under the mulch, I was digging around here just a minute ago, it's actually moist and damp under that mulch. So I'm retaining the water better over there because the sunlight is just directly striking this soil here, whereas it's touching the mulch over here, and sure the mulch is dry, but that's okay. The plants are not growing in the mulch, they're growing in the soil underneath it. So one reason I use the mulch is to keep the water in the soil. And the other reason is to keep the soil temperature down. I don't want my soil to be, you know, it's 83 degrees or something out here today. I don't want my soil temperature to be getting high because of the sunlight that's up here striking the soil. And so I actually brought along a thermometer to analyze what the temperature is under that mulch and what it is out here in full sun. Today hasn't been a super hot day. Uh, we're in the early part of June, but it is not a super hot day. It's about 83 degrees and it's not been super sunny all day long. So I imagine the temperature extremes, in fact, I've seen them be much more extreme in other times. But let's see what it is on an 83 degree day on the bare soil and under the mulch. So we're at like 94 degrees here on this bare soil. I'm probably moving back three inches of mulch here. And so then I get down to bare mineral soil. It's nice and damp. You can see the soil is leaving on my fingers. So over here, it's 75 degrees under this mulch. In the air, it's 83. And on the bare soil, it's in the 90s. So we can, not only does it preserve a lot of moisture when we have this covering, because the soil temperature is less, you know, if you want to boil water, if you want it to evaporate, you go ahead and increase the heat. But then also what's happening is, I think of this mulch here, it's like a shade tree for a microbe. So microbes being these little microscopic critters that you really can't see with the naked eye. And they're what is decomposing our mulch. They're what is causing soil health. They're a huge component. The plants and the microbes together create your healthy soil. And so when we give them, you know, on an 83 degree day or 93 degree day or 103 degree day, I especially, the hotter it gets, the more I appreciate a shade tree. And so the microbe can live in that soil underneath this mulch and it's keeping it cool. Who doesn't like to work in the cool rather than in the hot? And so I think that by doing this, we can provide, we can maintain our soil moisture better and we can provide a shade tree for that microbe. So let's go to the diverse native grassland and see how it works out there. So here we are now, we're in a diverse native grassland. So we've got the native warm season grasses, the native cool season grasses, the native forbs, and the native legumes all mixed in here into this field. And so what I want to look at is the same concept we were looking at in the garden. How do these plants contribute? How, how can we get mulch on the ground? How can we get thatch? Or if you want to call it armor on the soil, it's like protection for your soil. How can we get that protection on the soil in a grassland like this? And I chose to stand right here by these plants because these are sunflowers and a cup plant. And these are big plants. They are actually palatable to livestock. 
um, but they're great pollinator plants as well. And so these are big horsey plants. They get this dim on them that's big. Here's one from last year. I broke this off in the middle, but this is one of the sunflower stems from last year. Cup plant will have this big square stem on it Scale. that's, you know, two inches across sometimes, an inch across I'll for just sure. Hold this here. These okay. stems, These rolling, of course, so the livestock don't really eat them like well. The um, the so they have a habitat cup the plant the out here. It's beautiful while leaves standing. Yeah, square but then when they lay on the ground, they become that mulch in our garden. They're protecting our soil, that, they're that armor on our soil. And so this is what in a grassland, that we want our grassland to function so that there is plenty of this stuff and we are growing, like this is kind of woody. We want to grow this woody material because it gives that protection on the soil. I was out here one year and took soil temperatures out in this diverse native grassland just up that way. It was in the mid 90s that day. And the temperatures, of course, were a little more extreme than they were up here in the garden on a cooler day. But during that day, what I found is this. The day was in the mid 90s, as I said. Under the thatch, so under a bunch of these stems, under the native grasses, it was in the 70s, upper 70s. In the full sun, on some bare ground where it had been bared, it was 114 degrees. And so the impact on our water retention in the soil has got to be astounding when we're at 114 degrees. It's like baking a clay pot. Baking, you know, our soil is not all clay on the surface, but basically you're baking earth is what you're doing with that hot sun hitting, that sun, hitting the soil directly. So here at Hamilton Native Outpost, we love to learn. We love to think about grasslands. We love to think about native plants. That's just one of our passions. So if you want to watch more of the videos of other things we've been thinking of, such as the videos on getting the water into the soil and holding it there, you can check out our other YouTube videos. Thanks for joining us today.